All right, Aurora's Murder Song 54321 at the Nobel Peace Prize concert in 2015. I'm really keen on talking about this. I think it's an outstanding performance. I'm not an Aurora expert. I don't know much about her. I've watched this video probably 10 times over the last year, and I've also probably watched 20 reaction videos to it <laughs> over that time as well because I'm, I'm looking for someone to explain to me why this performance is so effective, why it's so uh, haunting and endearing at the same time. And I think I'm going to take a stab at it. Right off the top, we need to stop there. It's important to take a look at this frame. Uh, I had to go watch other videos of Aurora around this time period to get a feel for what I thought I was seeing. And I found out uh, many of the things I thought were incorrect. And now I think I've formulated a proper concept about this performer, Aurora. This shot right here tells us uh, what kind of performance this is going to be. From what I noticed from Aurora, she's perfectly capable of adapting to any any performance venue, any setting. And different venues will elicit a different type of performance from her is what I've noticed. This one, this tells you a lot right here. If you take a look, she's backlit. Those spotlights aren't even hitting her. They're making her glow from behind. The uh, front spots are, are diffused so much you don't see them hitting her. It's just giving her, um, it's, it's just lighting her up for the audience. Now from her perspective, look at that. That's what she's looking at. She's basically... Look, like on a UFO right now is what that looks like. The audience is almost completely gone, and you're surrounded by dimmed lights. So this this is going this setting is going to elicit a particular type of performance that we're about to see. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. He holds the gun again. One of the most important frames in this video for understanding how Aurora performs, or at least how she performed at this time in her uh, career. What, what I've decided to describe this as is it's a management of energy. She's constantly building a, an inner tension that she releases. These... That figure right there, her fingers curled tension right down to the joints is something that she's done in the other videos I've seen as well. Um, she's creating this tension within her body. And for this particular frame, it's not unusual for her to make that hand gesture. It's unusual that it's near her head. And of course, the reason why she put it there is because he held the gun next to her, her head. So she's both using, she's both, this is for her and for us. For her, it's this tension management. For us, it's to begin to imagine the the vision that she's creating for us. There's the juxtaposition of the narrative with our interpretation of this figure itself, both consciously and subconsciously, because it happens so fast. And for her, it's like a grounding into the story. This is the big push for her. Um, it would have been juvenile for her to like make a, a gesture like a gun and put it next to her head. We understand there was a gun next to her head. If there was any doubt she's about to be shot in the head, that's been dispelled. We know it's a gun, but it's vague. It's not fully formed. She portrays it as a indeterminate device with proximity to her head, as if maybe it's just a casual reference to some foreign object nearby, something indistinct and... We really don't need to concern ourselves with it over much. But she's singing about being murdered. She's soon shot in the head with this device, which to our minds isn't of little concern at all. This is the point at which uh, a lot of the re reviewers, react reactors to this video, begin to have some trouble when they realize what this song is about. And, you know, this is a... Uh, man, I could talk at this frame forever because this is where we have to decide... Um, you know, what kind of art is this? Is, is this, uh, are we able to deal with this subject? My head, I close my eyes and back. 
stop there. So now the spell for her is complete. When she started with that figure and she closed her eyes, she's now fully enveloped in the world that she was creating for us. From this point forward, we can start uh, observing the, the constant building of tension and releasing of tension that keeps her within this spell, keeps her managing the energy within the spell. Also, I want to say, what's his name? Um, the vocalist, her companion, that guy, what's his name? Uh, oh, Martin, is that his name? He does an awesome job in this where, you know, he's like, he, they're like a figure, figure skating pair, and he's the guy holding her up with this melody he's about to bring in. He's, and it is completely naked. He has, he has to hit every part of it and, and be totally in tune with her, and he does a fucking awesome job. I am dead. I know. He knows. There's that figure again. I'm not lying to you. She uses it um, often, not necessarily in that position, but her hands are always uh, moving. And she's building up like micro tension that keeps her within the other world from which she's communicating to us. And that also, in a very subconscious way, with that reaching out and her grabbing us, we feel that when she's. Uh -oh. Yeah, she's managing the tension that just keeps propelling her through the story. And in doing so, these types of gestures, she's like, this is like Sidney Pollock splattering us with paint, and we're the canvas, and we're totally affected by this performance. Oh, 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 oh. These, these gestures, the shaking it off, is the inverse of building the tension, building the energy. It's releasing excess energy to keep her, keep her on an even keel through the story. And he holds my body in his arms He didn't mean to do no harm And he holds... She is totally gone. She's not in this world any, any longer. She's in the other world where the story exists. Don't doubt it. And she's reaching through that veil between these worlds and giving us the story. Me oh, he did all to spare me from the awful things in life that comes and he cries and cries I know he knows that he's killing me for mercy and here I go oh oh This position also generates extra tension. There's no reason why she needs to have the mic so high that she needs to stand on her tiptoes. She wanted that. It builds some extra energy that she's going to use for this performance. And here I go. Oh, oh. That was like a major release of excess tension. That's something we all do subconsciously or are capable of doing. We rub our elbows like that when we feel particularly uncomfortable or uncertain. It's a subconscious action that we all do. Now, this management of the tension built uh, for these types of expressive arts, I think uh, it's not unusual, It's but she's not gonna crash and burn from this because she's constantly managing the energy. This isn't like um, Martin Sheen in Apocalypse Now. There's like there's no chance that she's gonna just crash and burn because she's constantly managing energy. But the expressive arts are you; those artists are capable of crashing and burning. I'd also like to say that <clears throat> considering uh, Aurora as a woodland fairy or an elf, a magical princess, that completely works for me too. That's a completely tolerable explanation about the magic that she's doing. He holds my body in his arms. He didn't mean to do no harm. And he holds me tight. Oh, he did all to spare me from the awful things in life that comes me cry. 
there it is again, that figure, and I think we see it at the very end as well. And Shaking off excess energy. The gone is gone, and so am I, and here I go. I would have loved to have seen the video um, continue on her face after that, because I noticed this in at least one of our other videos then when she's done a song and she's that far gone, when she comes back, she's literally startled to be to be back with us in this world. Now, I didn't talk about technically about the performance at all. I think uh, a lot of people have spoken enough about how incredible that performance is. So that was uh, my take that what makes her performances so magical is this is her ability to manage energy and to use that energy to transmit to us more than just the words of the song, more than just a beautiful melody. Uh, she's an interesting combination of a, of a gregarious person. She really, it seems like she just loves people, but she's also very introspective and, and those things together create, can create a magical performance. I wanted to add just this clip of her, it was around the same time period, um, answering some questions about uh, why they're popular now. And she's with that guitarist. And I want you to notice the body language between the two of them. And also notice that this type of expression is very natural to her. Hi, I'm Aurora, and this is Om Martin. And we're from Norway, Bergen. Yeah. Um, and we're musicians. 